Hi there, I am Paul Auger, and I am a Technical Director at Osh.co today, and today we are going to be looking at how to use Exclaimer for multiple domains in your Google Workspace. Now with the Google Workspace, you can actually set up multiple emails and you can set out that they will go via paul at osh.co today or paul at doing digital.co today. And every single one of those signatures, I would like to be a different signature with a different logo, possibly with different information on. The interesting thing about this is that Exclaimer actually said this couldn't be done. So I was like, that challenge accepted. And I said, okay, well, let me try and figure this out. And I know Workspace very well, I know Exclaimer very well, and I know Regular Expressions very well. And I used those three in combination with each other and actually solved it and demonstrated to them. And they were like, cool, that works. So now I'm going to explain it to you and hopefully you can get it to work too. What I'd like to say though, is that we are experts in Exclaimer and we are experts in Google Workspace, Google G Suite. And what we're going to do is we're going to offer this to you. So if you've got a problem with your Google Workspace or your Exclaimer, give us a, an email at paul at osh.co today and we can help you out. We can reach out, we can sort of like schedule an appointment. And if you are using Exclaimer and you would like to have a better price for Exclaimer, we will be able to beat all prices that you have been quoted for Exclaimer. So if you've got a question and you want to have it solved, Let's solve that. But now, let's get on to the video. So right now, I am in my Google Workspace and I'm going to send an email. So I've got the option over here of sending it from different places. Okay, so if you've never done this before, you go over here, say see all settings and go to accounts and you've got all these email addresses here and you can say add a new email address. So when you add a new email address, you type it in there and you then push next. And obviously this is going to be treated as an alias. So the important thing about this is that if you are actually in your admin and you go into your domains, this is where you actually set it up. Now, all of these domains that I have, I'd like to have different email addresses or well, different signatures for. So there's doing and this is a domain alias and journey from man, and Osh and all of the other ones. Okay, so those are there and those have been set up already. That's what we're going to be doing. Now, if I send an email from here and I send it to, let's say my Gmail, what Exclaimer does, and I've just brought up their website here, is step one is that you open up Exclaimer and you work from there, but then your workspace sends an email via G Suite or Workspace to the Exclaimer Cloud that has the signature then stamped onto it. It then sends from Exclaimer back to G Suite or Workspace and then from there it sends it out. So those are the, the five or six steps to actually understand what's actually happening. Now the problem is, is that when you send from here to the Exclaimer Cloud, Exclaimer just puts on a signature. Yes, you can have different signatures. My Exclaimer here, here I've got two signatures in here. So I've got a doing signature and I've got an Osh signature, which is just what I'm going to be doing with you guys today. This will be the first signature that goes and it'll never actually hit the second one. But there are a couple of rules that we can set up. So let me show you what we're going to do and we're gonna play around with this. Let's go over here, back to the emails and we're gonna send an email to my Gmail address. And I'm gonna say, this is test and I'm gonna say test and I'm gonna say send. Now. When this comes through, because I actually haven't set anything else up, it should actually get the doing email, uh, the doing signature. But what I want to do is I want to firstly go into the sent mails and I want to go into this test and I want to go here to say show original. So this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, there's a message ID, when it was created, who it was from and who it was to. The thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to look further down at this part over here. So this part is where all the magic happens. Who it's from, and there's my email address, and there's my email address with a domain into it. What we're going to do is this, is we're going to figure out how to make this do something for us. If I bring this back over, and I go here to apps, Google Workspace, and go into Gmail. Okay, just while we're doing that, 
here is my email that went through to the um, my Gmail, and that's the signature that's come on. Okay, so I'm going to move that out the way for right now. And we're going to scroll down here until we get advanced settings. Right down here, you will have a, a couple of settings that are already set up your Exclaimer already. So there's root to Exclaimer Cloud and further down here, the receive from Exclaimer Cloud. So if you have those two settings already, that means your Exclaimer is set up normally. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look inside here and I'm going to say edit. Root to Exclaimer Cloud. I'm going to make one here called Osh. That's the edit today. And I'm going to leave exactly the same things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a custom subject. So the custom subject I'm going to do is something that you will never ever type in yourself, okay, into the subject. And this is my rule that I've gotten. You can have other things like uh, tildes there. So whatever you know that none of your staff will ever use in the subject, you can put that as your custom subject. Okay, so let's use that. Or if you don't want to make it so complicated, let's just do that. Okay, and push save. Right now, what happens is that it's going to put a custom subject into this. It's going to change the root, and it's going to push it out to Exclaimer Cloud. Okay, so I'm push save. And I'm push save. I'm just going to do this in a couple of steps so that you can see. If I now say test and test again and say send, you will see over here that that's what my sig my subject now looks like. So it's got square brackets, osh.cdo today, and then square brackets in the test. Now, obviously, we don't want to have those square brackets in. Over here, under osh signature, I'm going to firstly reorder this. And I'm going to say the osh signature goes first and push OK. So now, under signature rules, what I'm going to do is click on signature rules and say apply the signature. Only add the signature if the subject contains osh. Close that. And then remove this text from the subject. Okay, so that's quite simple. So what it's going to do is actually going to put this signature on only when that has got that in the subject. Okay, so if I minimize this again, uh, let's close some of this other stuff and say compose this one more time and say test three, I think we're on now and say send. And now you see test three's come in and it's got the OSH signature at the bottom and it has nothing in the front. That is the first part. And now let's add stuff that it will actually figure out how to do this itself. Back in the content compliance over here, we have got that no matter what it sends out, if I send out via doing or via any of the other domains I have, it's still going to match all of this. Let's actually figure out what it's sending through. So I'm going to add a new expression here. And I'm going to do an advanced content match. I'm just going to look in the head in the full headers. And I'm going to do that it matches regex. Now, if you don't know anything about regex, I'm going to do it quite simply and explain it quite simply. But there is a full course that we've got that I've linked down to the descriptions that is on Udemy with a special price just for you and that you can have a lot more ideas of how regex actually works. What we're going to do is, as I said before, we've got the special thing over here where it says from Paul Auger, and then it's got my email address. If I now say compose and drop this down to doing here and also send it to my Gmail and say test again and say send, this will now come from my doing email. So if I go into the center, it's coming from my doing and I'm gonna go in here and say show original again and what you'll see here is it says from Paul Auger, but obviously the email address is different. But the only thing that's really different changes from the OSH one is that this is an OSH domain and this over here is a doing domain. If we can use regex to figure out which domain we're actually looking at, then we can actually say for this domain, do this signature and for that domain, do this signature. So I hope you're following. Let's now try and figure this out. Do this line over here because all of your staff will have that line somewhere in there. Depends on how you've set up your domain and how you set up your Active Directory and how you set up your Google Directory and whatever. It might have that you've got Paul and then an initial in the middle. You might have three names or you might have some people with three names or you might have some people with four names. For example, in South Africa, we have a lot of people called Fandamava. So that would be Fandamava. Okay, and then their email address could be 
uh, paul at doing.digital and close that like that. So those are kind of the options that we have. If you had something else where you had um, two names over here or dots in the middle, you would have to figure out your own regex. But let's try and figure this out from here. So with regex, what we're going to do is we're going to say at the beginning of the line, I'm going to start that with a little thing called a caret. And at the beginning of the line, we're going to say start with from and then a colon. So, so far you can see over here that both of them are actually matching beautifully. We've now got a space. So we're going to do a backslash and S to make a space. And now everything's matching so far. Now, depending on what you've got for yours, all of ours have got just a first name. So it's not an initial, it's just a first name. So all of ours would have a square bracket and then we'd have a capital A to a capital Z and then a lowercase a to a lowercase z. And what you'll notice is that it just says, oh, I've matched the first letter over there, which is the P. But what we're going to do in regex now is we're going to say, go up until the end of that word by using a plus. Okay, so we've got the whole of the word and now it stops there because now it's hit a space and it goes, oh, I don't know what to do. So you go, now do a space for me. And then we're going to say, cool. Now we're going to do the surname. So also, same thing again, capital A to capital Z and lowercase a to lowercase z. We're going to go to the end of the surname, so we're going to put a plus sign there. And if we didn't have the fundamava there, we could just put a space going there, a space, and we would be at the end over here, which was nice and cool. Now, because we've got the fundamava, we're going to put this in just now, but remember, we need to obviously match this. Less than sign, so that's that one. Then we're going to have probably lowercase letters. So we could actually do a bracket lowercase a to lowercase z and close brackets and go to the end of that word. Okay, if you've got capitals in there, you would obviously put capital A, uh, capital A to capital Z there. But it depends on obviously how you want to do this. So now after that word, we have a at sign. So we have at and then we have the domain so we got doing and then dot digital and then a close of that so that is our expression and that will match every single person so if we got another one let's just copy that and let's put that at the bottom and let's say we've got uh, mary smith that matches so anything with two words two names works perfectly if we have um, mary over here dot smith it breaks. Okay, so it depends on how you are, your emails are set up. But now what we don't need to do is I'd like to match the fundamava here. So that matches and that matches these, that word and that word don't match. So if you do want to do this, and um, we can carry on, this is part is obviously voluntary and um, optional. So if it doesn't make sense to you for your situation, then please just ignore this. So we're going to say this whole thing. So I'm going to take from the first space all the way to the end of the word. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put this inside a bracket, paste that, put that inside a bracket and put a question mark there, which means that it's optional. Another bracket, paste that in, close that bracket and make it optional. If your longest name has four words in it, then you'd have two defined ones and two optional ones. So now this is our actual expression. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go into here. And I'm going to say the regular expression is this. And paste that in. Okay, thinking about this now, we're actually we're on the osh one. So let's actually change this a little bit. And change this from doing to osh. And you can say test expression. Paul at osh. It won't work because remember it is from colon space Paul OJ less than and there. And now it says it's a match. So you can obviously write a description for this if you want to explain this to yourself. And you can say minimum match counts and things like that. But that is quite easy and that's all we need to do. So those are the headers we're going to do and we're going to push save. So if we get anything that matches that regular expressions for that person's email, this will then put a square bracket that says 
see on the on the subject here of osh.zero today. And I'm going to push save on that. That will then go through to exclaimer and work in exclaimer. So I'm going to add another one here. And I'm going to say root to exclaimer cloud. And I'm going to say doing dot digital. Okay. We're going to look for outbound and internal sendings. We're going to add an expression. Let's add an expression here. Advanced content and the full headers. And that's going to be matches regex. And let's paste that in because that's our digital, doing digital one. And you can take test and you can say from again. And that matches and we can push save. We're going to modify message, put a custom subject in. Uh, square brackets of doing dot digital square brackets change the root to exclaim a cloud and require TLS let's just add that setting because let's just save that for right now okay so we've got two content compliance and under here let's just edit this okay so the one is the regex and the second one is this heading over here so we are going to just copy that and there's going to be full headers doesn't contain this text and let's just see if there's anything else I missed. Nope. Add this. Advanced full headers not contains text. That one. And push save. So basically this is saying that if it has got a signature on, it will have that text in the header. If it doesn't have that, sig that text in the header, it means that there hasn't been a signature applied. So because it hasn't been applied, it would then send it to exclaim a cloud. So let's push save on that one. Okay. So this doing digital we are going to do the subject of doing digital like that. So let's just copy that, go back into doing digital and change the signature rules. So only add the signature when it contains that, remove this text from the signature and then push OK. Right now we've only got two. We've got the OSH signature and the doing signature. If you've got more than two domains like I do, I would have to put in another couple of domains here and make another couple of signatures. If you've got two domains, that was where you would stop. So let's now test this and see that this actually works. Okay, last test to Gmail and we're going to say test from, this is from Osh, test, send that and do another one and this time I'm going to do it from doing, also to my Gmail, test doing and say test and say send. So theoretically what we should have right now is we should have two emails that have come through, different signatures on each and nothing weird in the subject line. Okay, and what you'll now see in my Gmail is that there are two, test from doing with a nice doing logo there and test from Osh with a nice Osh logo. The most important thing I can actually suggest to you is that one thing I did make a mistake on and uh, so if I paused the video and I was like, what on earth am I doing? I'm feeling stupid here. Under edit here, you need to make sure that this is all, if all the following match the message. And that is obviously both of these. So if you don't have all of them and it is on any, which is that one, then it will just sort of like do a nice round repetitive loop that will never actually get out of anything. So just remember that it happens like that. And that's how it works. I hope that it makes sense. It is a bit weird. If you do need any help to set this up yourself, um, please let me know and I can help you out with it. You can email me on paul at osh.zero today. And if you are running Exclaimer and you would like to have a better price on it, please email me on paul at osh.zero today and I will be able to give you a better price and beat whatever price that you have been given. And also be able to help you set it up for you. So reach out. If you do have a question, reach out. If you do like this video and it has helped you, please like the video. Thanks so much. Enjoy and I'll see you soon.